Welcome to this month's look at some of my favourite in-progress projects being made with the Unreal Engine. I've created these to help get some extra eyes on indie or small team projects and also to show that Unreal can and is used for more than just super high fidelity, 8k, million dollar content. Links to all of the games and relevant socials where possible will be in the description below. If you're working on a game or project that you'd like me to take a look at, be sure to leave me a link to that in the comments below as well, as well as letting me know if there's anything that you see here that you're really interested in and would like to see more of. To get started with the projects, in no particular order. Number 5, Mena. I probably pronounced that wrong, so apologies there. But travel back to Britain, full of mirth, myth and magic, in this top-down fantasy adventure RPG from the creator of Lumo. The Wheel of Seasons is stopped turning as a dark force moves across the land. It's down to you, a true adventure, to uncover the secrets of the ley lines and power up Stonehenge. Mena's beautiful but deadly open world lets you explore at your own pace, and if you've ever wanted to play a full 3D classic Zelda-like, but at PC resolutions, then this will be one to keep an eye on, and you can do this by wishlisting the game over on Steam. And the developer of the game also provides some interesting and insightful devlogs covering some behind the scenes progress. He's also an experienced dev in the industry, so these will be great for those of you interested in a deeper, more technical look at game dev. Number four, Copcore. This is another project in development by Dope Loop Games, a name that came up in last month's top list with the game Dice Guy. In Copcore, begin your journey as a rookie officer and make your way up the ranks to police chief by fighting against bad guys and defusing bad things. Perform various jobs as an officer of the law, such as patrolling the streets and processing evidence. Or, if you have the guts and experience, you can go after the most wanted criminals like drug lords and more bad guys. Every action that you perform has an associated skill. For example, if you defuse a bad thing, you will increase your bad thing disposal skill. And you can choose to be the good or the bad cop depending on the choices that you make. And this will affect things like your reputation and also give you the chance to increase your perks. As I mentioned back in January, this looks to be an interesting developer to follow and see what they come up with next. Number three, Peasants. Another project that has a wealth of devlogs and more technical recaps of what goes into the process of creating a game. This will be great for those of you who want to learn more about the game, as well as game development in general. Peasants is a city builder for those of you who like to spend hours making the best looking city, and yet still has an element of micromanagement. In this game, you'll have the ability to jump off grid and build a city reminiscent of an old medieval village with natural, flowing, organic growth, whilst actually adapting to the terrain instead of controlling it. You start off at the basic level, a small camp in an unexplored land, and you spend your time building that up to be a bustling town full of peasants for you to please. Number two, Born of Bread. Play as a flower golem who possesses a never-ending childlike wonder and a set of odd abilities. Team up with a colourful cast of characters, explore the different regions of a wonderful world ripe with mysteries and engage in a fun and quirky turn-based combat system. With a unique artistic direction, Born of Bread's visuals are a mix of 2D characters evolving into a 3D world. It's packed with humour and likeable characters, as well as a storyline that tackles serious topics such as character growth and the consequences of choice, whilst always managing to remain joyful and funny. And there's not a whole lot to say about this one, as at the time of recording, the developers are keeping this under fairly tight wraps, but the unique mixture of the art, the story and the gameplay make this one to look out for going forward. And number one, The Siege and Sandfox. This is a 2D stealth metroidvania with parkour platforming. Explore the majestic palace and ancient prisons of a kingdom under siege. Don the mantle of the legendary Sandfox as you venture into the ruins below and discover the true threat from a sand-born evil. This is one that I've been watching grow over the years and it's interesting as it's seemingly one of the few games being made inside of Unreal utilizing only 2D assets. 
The style in this one though is definitely not lacking due to Cardboard Sword's artistic skills and the clever use of normal maps on the sprites to make use of Unreal's powerful lighting options. This game's been in development for years and it feels as though it's getting closer to the release date of the project, so hopefully one that we'll see in the best of release with Unreal over the coming months. And if you're a developer who wants to learn more on how to make games just like this to utilize Unreal's 2D systems, be sure to check out my channel as I have existing content covering exactly that, as well as more planned content covering the 2D systems inside of Unreal.